guys, Rafe here. Welcome back to Call of Duty Warzone. Today I like to give you a lot of different clash options to use because everybody out there plays differently. Everybody likes different weapons. This is going to be a lot longer video than I normally do here on the channel, but I feel like um, I would like to show you a lot of different things. I just feel that players all play differently, and, and these are things that work for me, so hopefully some of these classes will work for you. You know, if it's just one of them, that is perfectly fine with me. But having a loadout in Warzone, being able to either find a loadout that is dropped in randomly or being able to buy a loadout with $6,000 or 6,000 cash in game is really a game changer. I feel like that loadouts are the way you need to go, definitely towards the end game. But as early as you can get a loadout, I would recommend getting one because it makes the uh, killing enemies and it just kind of makes the game a lot easier in my opinion, just overall. So I'm not going to go in great detail on all these attachments or we would be here forever. If you are new to the game, a lot of these attachments have cons. A lot of these attachments have pros. So you always get to remember to read each attachment and see what the pros and cons are. If you would like to know kind of more in detail about some of these attachments, you can go back and check out some of my other videos about Modern Warfare. I've done a lot of class setups for multiplayer. So I've kind of explained these attachments a bit more in those situations uh, or in those for, for those kind of situations. But just overall, we're going to change up a lot of these uh, uh, classes because we're looking for things with range and looking for things with somewhat with speed for close quarter situations kind of towards the end or in buildings. But overall, I'm building a lot of these classes for mid to long range gunfights. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. The very first class, we're going to run EOD, Overkill, and Tracker. Of course, you can run whatever perks you want. I think Overkill is an absolute beast in Warzone because you can have two weapons with five attachments each. Of course, my... Um, lethal is going to be a proximity mine. My tactical is going to be the heartbeat sensor. The heartbeat sensor is pretty trash in multiplayer, but I feel like it has a, a good use in Warzone. For this class, guys, we're going to go with the colossal suppressor. Of course, we're going to get damage range, recoil control, sound suppression. We're also going to go with the 810 millimeter Odin factory barrel, which damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control. We're going to go with the 3.0 optic. That way we have a bit of range. This gun, if you hold it down, it has a very slow, consistent fire rate. If you tap fire it like a single shot, that is where the weapon will shine. Upper upper chest, upper body shots, and head shots. Of course, head shots do deal, deal more damage in Warzone than they do multiplayer. If you can hit upper body shots and head shots with this weapon, you will break armor in an instant. Uh, the... For the grip, we're going to use the rubberized grip tape, which is going to give us a bit more recoil control. And then we're going to go with the Ranger 4 grip, which is going to be recoil control and aiming stability. For our second weapon, we're going to run the MP7. With the MP7, we're going to go with the monolithic suppressor, the FSS recon for more range, of course, more uh, bullet velocity and recoil control. The Merc 4 grip for recoil control and hip fire accuracy. It's good to have a sub with a Merc 4 grip, in my opinion, if you're in a building or a small circle towards the end. If you have to hip fire, the Merc 4 grip definitely helps out with that. I go with the 60 round mags and the stippled grip, stippled grip tape, excuse me, which gives you aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. Uh, the next class we're going to look at is my LMG class. With this, we're going to run EOD Restock and Tracker. Restock is the perk and the perk 2 slot, which will uh, recharge equipment over 25 seconds. Of course, in Warzone, it recharges equipment over 50 seconds. So keep that in mind. There is a multiplayer only and a Warzone only option for this. So depending on what you're playing, if you are playing Warzone, it's going to be every 50 seconds. But I still feel it's very handy. That way you get a lethal grenade and a tactical grenade every 50 seconds. I am running smoke. I feel like with a LMG... With restock, I don't have to have overkill on. I don't have to reload as long, uh, often. I can be kind of a support player, throw out smokes for my team if we need to push, throw out smokes if we need to fall back. Now for the pistol, I am using the M19, but I'm using the two-tone version that you get in the armory. Of course, you can use whatever pistol that you prefer. Now for the weapon, I'm using the PKM with the monolithic suppressor, the heavy barrel, the 3.0 optic, the stippled grip tape, and the snatch grip. Of course, the monolithic suppressor, as always, is going to give us sound suppression and damage range. I feel that suppressors in Warzone are great because it keeps you off the radar. Now, most of the suppressors in game are kind of trash, in my opinion, but the monolithic suppressor is great. If you are new to Call of Duty Modern Warfare or if you've played a uh, Call of Duty game in the past, but you have not played this one, uh, the monolithic suppressor on every weapon does give you damage range plus sound suppression. So keep that in mind. They also do make your uh, weapon ADS very slow, though, so that's also a kind of downfall. Of course, with the heavy barrel getting damage range and bullet velocity, of course, this is a larger zoomed optic. This weapon does not have a lot of kick, and you can pick people off at extremely long, uh, long ranges with this sight. 
Of course, the stiffle grip tape is going to give us some aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed, which does help out if you're having to move around and fight because you're going to be slower with an LMG. And the snatch grip is recoil control and aim down sight speed. Another grip you can use is the operator grip because it only has one con compared, uh, you know, one con with recoil control. If you don't care about that ADS speed, but I feel like the snatch grip is just the pretty much, uh, you just need to run it because you're getting two pros compared to that one con. The next class we're going to look at is probably the tried and true class for most people that play Modern Warfare because the M4A1 and the MP5 are by far the best guns in multiplayer, even though they both have been nerfed a lot. But in my opinion, I don't think they are the best classes in Warzone I, I, or the best weapons. I think they're outclassed by some other things. But overall, if you are a new player, I think the M4A1 will be easier to use. If you've never played Call of Duty or if you have played Call of Duty, this is a weapon that is good all around and the recoil is fairly easy to control. We're going with EOD, Overkill, and Tracker, a lethal of a Simtex, and a smoke, I mean, a lethal of a Simtex, excuse me, and a tactical of a smoke grenade. For the M4, I'm going with a monolithic suppressor. The Grenadier Barrel, which is going to give you damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control. You can go with the Corvus Custom, which is the exact same thing, a bit more mobility. You're going to get your max damage out of the weapon uh, about two meters further with the M16 Grenadier stock. That is why I'm running it, just personally, just personal preference. Commando foregrip, recoil stabilization, aiming stability. That's going to help us with the side-to-side -side recoil. 60 round mag, you can go 60 or 50, whatever you prefer, but I would recommend choosing one or the other. And last but not least, stipple grip tape, aim down sight speed, sprint to fire speed. Uh, if you want to drop this stipple grip tape and run an optic, that is perfectly fine. I'm used to running the weapon with iron sights, playing ground war, playing 6v6, so I can handle the weapon very easily with iron sights. But... I do understand in war zone with a massive map, iron sights may not be ideal in all situations. The second weapon we're going to run, of course, is going to be the MP5. We're going to go with the barrel attachment of the monolithic integral suppressor. You do have the option to run the monolithic suppressor on the muzzle, but whichever one you run, you're not going to be able to run the opposite on the barrel, if that does make sense. I'm going to go with the classic straight inline stock, which is aiming stability. This is if you need to get in a longer range gunfight, this seems to help. Uh, in my opinion. Also, you could go with the collapsible stock or the close quarter stock. The good thing about the collapsible stock is it does give you some extra movement speed. If you get caught close to a storm, you can pull this weapon out and absolutely blaze past everybody. You're going to be able to fly with that stock equipped. Stipple grip tape, of course, aim down sight, sprint to fire, same as always. The 10 millimeter rounds, which give you extra damage and extra range. If you are a very good shot, you hit a lot of upper body shots and head shots, the 10 millimeter rounds are an absolute must in my opinion. If you're not extremely accurate, you can get away with running the 45 round mags. You will see absolutely no difference in my opinion. A lot of people think that the 10 millimeter rounds are guaranteed damage, but they're only going to be guaranteed damage if you're not really missing and you're hitting a lot of upper body and headshots. Of course, the Merc foregrip, recoil control and hip fire accuracy. Always great to have hip fire accuracy uh, in close quarter situation. The next class we're going to look at is going to be the AK class. Now the AK is a great gun. One of the hardest hitting guns in a lot of situations in multiplayer. It is very good in Warzone. Just be aware this gun has a lot of recoil. We're going with EOD, Overkill, Tracker, Simtex. For our tactical, we'll go with the Heartbeat Sensor. The Heartbeat Sensor is pretty trash in all situations in Modern Warfare. But now that we have a Battle Royale, I feel like the Heartbeat Sensor is good for clearing buildings. So I just slap it on some of these classes because it has become pretty handy in a lot of situations in my opinion. With the AK, we're going with the Monolithic Suppressor, the RPK Barrel, Damage Range, Bullet Velocity, Recoil Control, uh, the Integral Hybrid Sight, which gives us a long range zoom and a short range zoom. You just kind of flick, of course, your uh, stick and you'll be able to swap between those two uh, sight distances. The Skeleton Stock, Aim Walk and Movement Speed, Aim Down Sight Speed. You could go with the No Stock option if you would like, if you want a little bit more movement speed. And last but not least, the Ranger Foregrip for Recoil Control and Aiming Stability. You could drop this and run iron sights and go with rubberized grip tape or stippled grip tape. If you want some more ADS and sprint to fire, stippled grip tape. If you have recoil issues, rubberized grip tape. Uh, the next thing we're going to go with this class is going to be the AX-50. Either, a, uh, either sniper rifle, the HDR, or the AX-50 is great. I just prefer the AX-50. I've used it more. I use a monolithic suppressor, the 32-inch factory barrel. So pretty much you're wanting to make these all these weapons have extra damage and range. And you know, that way you can get into long and mid-range gunfights. You kind of see a pattern with all these classes. The thermal sniper scope, that way we can spot enemies at a distance if they do not have cold-blooded on. 
and I think this is very handy if you and your team are pushing areas or you're trying to hold an area maybe towards the end. The Sengard Assassin, Sengard Arms Assassin Stock, which gives us aim down sight speed, and stippled grip tape as always, aim down sight speed and sprint to fire speed. Two more classes left, guys, here. I promise I'll try to hurry up. I know the video is kind of going on for a while now. Uh, personally, I think the Ram is the best AR in the game. Just overall, I also think the Ram is the best uh, weapon you can use in Warzone if you can control the recoil. I'm not going to go over this secondary weapon because you just saw what I run on the AX50 uh, just in the previous class setup. The one thing I did change is I'm running cold-blooded as perk 1. That way, if I do have to snipe with this class, I feel like uh, sometimes you're getting sniped with thermal sights kind of back, you know, you're back and forth in a sniper battle. That way, cold-blooded will save you a little bit if they're using thermals as well. I use C4 with this class. Do something to mix it up. C4 is handy in uh, Warzone because if you're in a building, you can throw this, stick it on the wall, leave it there. When somebody comes around the door, you can blow it up. Or if you need to throw it through the air, you can double tap it and blow it up as soon as you let it go. Of course, the heartbeat sensor again. And with the RAM, we're running the monolithic suppressor, the XRK Ranger barrel, which gives us damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control. I like the 4.0 flipped hybrid sight. This game, of course, Warzone has a lot of long lines of sight, a huge map. So anything you can get or you can use that gives you a short, short range sight and a long range sight in one is great in my opinion. I love the look of a holographic on the RAM. I don't know why. I don't really use holographic sights on any other weapon, but I really do like it on the RAM class. The Commando foregrip, and last but not least, the 50 round mag. Uh, the very last class is probably my all time personal favorite so far after out of 50 games in Warzone. I really, really like this class. I don't know what it is about the AUG and the PKM together, but I feel like I can just absolutely melt people. I mean, I can go in solo and melt squads with these two weapons. I'm not sure what it is, but I just really like the feel of these two weapons. I'm using double time as perk one. That way, since I have a sub as my primary, if I need to get somewhere quickly, I can with double time and a sub because I can move quicker. Of course, we've got lethal of C4 and tactical of a smoke grenade. Uh, the very first thing we're going to run here uh, on the AUG, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. Let me go ahead and go over this PKM. The same setup as the my LMG class, monolithic suppressor, 25.9 inch barrel, BLK 3.0 optic, stippled grip tape, and the snatch grip. When it comes to the AUG, even though it is, a sub, it is a sub, do not let it fool you. This thing can do some damage at a distance. We're going to go with the monolithic suppressor. We're going to go with the 407 millimeter extended barrel. Now, you can go with the lightweight if you want to make have a little bit um, more mobility than you will with the extended barrel, but it's not much. If you like to go with the six, uh, 622 millimeter barrel, this is more like an AR style barrel. So I just usually stick with the uh, extended barrel just because of that recoil control. And you'll see why here in just a second because one of our other attachments does give us a little bit of recoil. I'm going to go once again with the 4.0 flipped optic. Uh, you could go with iron sights or anything that you prefer. Optics are always up to preference, so don't feel like you got to stick the optic on that I use. The next thing we're going to go with is the 5.56 NATO rounds. We're going to go with the 60 round drum instead of the 30 round mag. This is going to give us damage, range, magazine, ammo capacity. Here's where the recoil control comes in, aim down sight speed and movement speed. So that is one reason I like to run this extended barrel. And last but not least, the commando foregrip for some of that side to side, you know, that movement of the recoil. And it does help out a lot in my opinion. Like I said, you could change a few things up and make this more of a classic style submachine gun where you can move around a little quicker. But in my opinion, overall, this setup right here, I'm not just running around the map playing Warzone. I, I'm kind of tactically moving from building to building, clearing them, always having my gun up. So I feel like if I get in a gunfight that's close range, I can destroy people with this AUG very quickly. And if I got to pick people off at a distance, this PKM definitely does the work for me. Really doesn't have any recoil. You can just hold the trigger down. Uh, so that's why I feel like that is the best class out of all the ones I've shown you. But personally, I think uh, just depending on your play style, any of these classes would work if you like these style weapons. That's why I want to do a lot of different classes. That way, no matter what you like to use and how you like to play, maybe you could find a class here that would work for you. Leave me a comment, guys. I know the video is a lot longer than normal, but like I said, I wanted to give you know a good in-depth kind of review of all these weapons and kind of what I like to use on them. And like I said, hopefully you can find something that will work for you in Call of Duty Warzone. Of course, if you'd like to hit the like, if you had not subscribed yet, please do so. I'll catch you next time. Peace.